Good afternoon and good evening. Welcome back to Planet IMEX, the October edition. My name is Natasha Richards, and it is my pleasure to introduce today's final session. Ride the waves of change like a master and surf into meditation. During the session, I encourage you to use the chat as much as you like, but ask that you use the Slido platform for questions for Lee. You can access Slido to the left of the video feed on a desktop and below the video feed on a mobile device. Our speaker this evening is a coffee enthusiast. She loves to watch the British drama Midsummer Murders, has a 15-year-old son called Luca that competitively raced carts and has a singular goal to be a Formula One champion. And she has a great passion for essential oils. It is my pleasure to introduce Lee Papa. Thank you so much, Natasha. I am thrilled to be back with you today. And I get tickled every time I see that Planet IMAX intro with the fish. <laughs> I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I adore that. Uh, thanks again for joining me. We had a great session yesterday with the um, intro to mindfulness and today we're going to do ride the waves of change like a master. But we will be, because I love mindfulness, we are going to be doing some basics as well in mindfulness for those who didn't attend yesterday. So let's get to it. Just as a reminder, we're going to do Q&A at the end, and we're going to do four giveaways. Gotta love the giveaways. The new book, A Year of Mindfulness for Beginners, the 365 journey, the 365 day journey, and we'll do that after each segment. Reminder to just take what resonates and leave the rest. I had a fabulous conversation with a, uh, a friend uh, that has been in the industry and we've known each other for many years and we were discussing yesterday's session and saying that, you know, you don't even realize the seeds that are being planted for another time. So instead of resisting anything that may not resonate with you at the moment, just allow it to wash over you because it will be just a seed for another time or maybe it's for someone else. Quick story, my story in a nutshell. Just as a reminder for those who aren't familiar with my story, um, in prior to 2008, I led a life that was less than optimal. I wore stress like a badge of honor. I looked outside myself for happiness, for relief, for success, for peace. I thought everything was out there. And in 2008, I had a near-death experience and that opened up a whole nother realm of understanding about what the purpose of life is and understanding how powerful I was as a spirit having a physical experience and how peace and well-being and success and joy, all of those beautiful things that I was seeking actually lived within me. But I needed to quiet my mind so that I could access them. And then I was just so thrilled with un this understanding that I wanted to share it with as many people as possible. And I opened a wellness center and in its uh, started with two rooms, but in its last incarnation, it was 6,000 square feet. We had a cafe retail space, private practitioner space, uh, lots of classrooms. We did over 4,000 classes, tens of thousands of people came through there. And then I received the call that shifted the trajectory. Um, I was recommended to IMEX America as a wellness expert, and IMEX was looking to move into more well-being and more wellness topics, and, uh, and a beautiful relationship occurred, and this is my sixth year with IMEX now, so very thrilled to be here. If you were on yesterday, you understand the power of intention and how important it is in the navigation of your life. It is not just a goal, it is a goal with emotion and that fuels your goal. 
And when the emotion is pure and is from a place of uh, support and love for all involved, it is infused with that, that goal and the trajectory of that goal uh, is, is faster. You are able to obtain those goals in a more expansive way. So I look to setting intentions in everything that I do, every session that I do, every webinar, class, uh, or private session. I set the intention that the person that I'm working with or the people that are listening to me are receiving the information exactly what they need at that time, and they're receiving it from a place of heart-centeredness, openness, and non-judgment. And so my intention always, as I'm working with you, is to partner with you by providing mindfulness tools to ease your path individually through this time of extraordinary change, and to offer nurturing concepts, which in turn provides opportunities for you to do the same for others personally and professionally. And this is how we change the world. So our session today, we, as always, have a lot to cover, right? I want to give you as much information as possible. But today, we're going to incorporate an exercise and a meditation. So I may talk a little faster than normal. Um, so we're going to do those four parts, the mindfulness training, the basics. We'll talk about change in that. The breathing exercise and awareness exercise. And then the guided relaxation and meditation and we're going to do the closing and Q&A, and we'll wrap up for the day or evening. So in our basics, we are going to address mindfulness again, because that is what we do, and it's very important. We'll talk about the current climate and understanding change. What is mindfulness? Hopefully, I can hear you all saying it with me. Mindfulness equals awareness, awareness of your thoughts and actions and the world around you in non-judgment. That's the trick, right? And this is one of the reasons why we call it a practice. Because we have been programmed, right, all of our lives typically through everything we put in our eyes and our ears, and then we regurgitate it by speaking it and reinforcing it. Uh, judgment, duality, this against that, um, you know, any kind of um, Judgment that is out there is usually labeled, right? But who do we judge the most? That's right. We judge ourselves the most. So we must start there. We can't expect to change the world or anybody else or any system without going first within to shift ourselves, to love ourselves, to care for ourselves, to nurture ourselves. And once we have that extraordinary journey through a mindfulness practice, then we start to understand the external, and that's when we will embrace change. We will understand change. So the current climate, right? We talked a little bit about this yesterday. The current climate has brought up a lot of those labels, a lot of those less than optimal emotions. And I have moved over the years, I've moved away from the terms good and bad, because again, that's judgment and that's um, duality, but I find that using the term optimal and less than optimal is more neutral. It feels better. But the current climate has brought up so much uncertainty, polarization, um, resistance, other things like violence and fear and suffering and anger. I mean, I could go on and on and on. And when we say those words, it's almost like we're getting pelted by the energy of those words. But if we look at it in a different way, we can say that these motions, such as isolation and loneliness and insecurity, um, instability, all of these things that are the byproduct of the circumstances that we are finding ourselves in, are we don't have to embrace them. So all of them are called contrast. So if we lump all of them to contrast, we lose the power of those negative words and feelings, and we start to shift our consciousness into a different um, pattern, program. What we're doing is we're reprogramming our subconscious mind to non-judgment and to acceptance, 
and to understanding the power that we have within us to create a reality. So when we look at chaos, we look at anger, we look at fear, we look at violence, we look at all of those things that we had listed, we understand that they're just contrast. So we're diffusing them. And now is the mindful observer, because that's what we are when we're in mindfulness practice, we're the observer in awareness, in non-judgment. So I'm not judging, I'm not pushing against, I'm not resisting, I'm just aware. Then the contrast becomes our biggest teacher. The wisdom that we glean from this contrast is pointing the way, is showing us what it is that we need to shift within ourselves so that we're not attracting that. Going back to the session yesterday, if you have an opportunity and haven't seen it, I encourage you to go back to look at it. And that is that we are all energy and energy cannot be destroyed, but it can be changed for the better. So all of these, you know, secrets, all of these aspects and core concepts dovetail and they are integrated into the overall um, kind of umbrella of a mindfulness practice. So what we do is we learn that reality reveals the creation, whether you decide or not. And what I mean by that is if you look at your external circumstances, you'll be able to tell whether you are in mindfulness practice or not, because it, you'll know how you're reacting and you'll know what's happening around you. So you're either the participant in the contrast, whirling in the tornado, or you are the mindful observer in non-judgment, seeing it for what it is. It's not you, it's the contrast. Hope that makes sense for you. So understanding change, this is what we really wanna get into today. Change is something we want, we want to embrace. There is nothing more constant than change. I'm sure you've heard that, right? Nothing more constant than change. But when we start to shift ourselves, I use the analogy of being an energetic being in a colander. I call it the colander effect. So if you can picture kind of that Tupperware type colander, I like to visualize the bright yellow one with all the holes and you are this vibrational being in this colander, and you've decided you're gonna step into mindfulness practice. You're gonna start meditating. You're gonna become aware. You're not going to be judging first and foremost yourself. And then of course it will happen that you're not judging others or other circumstances. You're slowing things down. You're quieting the mind and you start raising your frequency because you are a vibrational being. And as you raise your frequency, those things that no longer are a vibrational match for you are gonna fall out the holes of that colander. And that's just a visual for you because when things start shifting around you, we as humans have a programmed, I don't know, knee jerk reaction of something changes and we go, oh, I wanna grab hold of that. Even if those things are not optimal for you, change is scary for people. So we are like, oh, I'm going to, I don't want to lose that thing, that person, that relationship, that job, that circumstance, that home, that whatever. So then you dip your vibration back into the depths of where you were, which could be fear and anger, resistance. And then you end up yo-yoing and climbing yourself back out of that vibration. So when we understand change for the beautiful uh, element of our transformation that it is, we start to embrace it. Then it becomes, as we're a mindful observer, it starts to become, oh yeah, change. That means I'm getting closer to my goal. I'm getting closer to my intention. And it's the same of what's going out in the world. If we start shoving things down so we don't have to deal with them, um, we are swallowing our truth, our words, we're not speaking our truth. We're shoving down pains and sorrows from childhood, from, from yesterday. We just keep shoving, shoving, shoving. What's gonna happen? It's going to erupt. So it's going to be forced change. And that eruption can look like illness, uh, emotional distress, 
addiction, dis-ease in the body? Well, if it's happening on our physical level, it's happening on our emotional level, it can also be happening in the world. It's the same thing. When things have been shoved down for so long, there's going to be an eruption. And when we acknowledge that that change is good, because when that erupts in, uh, erupts in us, we now know as the mindful observer, oh, change is happening so that I can deal with it, so that I can get closer to my goal. I hope that's making sense for you. And we'll keep reinforcing that throughout the session. So we change our perspective and we change our outcome, just like we talked about yesterday, changing our perspective on certain other secrets. You'll go back to that one, but changing our perspective about change and really embracing change will change our outcomes. And we are now at a place for our first drawing. So I invite you to plug into the chat the Number that you think is the drawing winning number between one and 10. Give you a second to do that. One and 10. This is a drawing for the book, A Year of Mindfulness for Beginners. Do, 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 do. And I'm going to go ahead and draw that. I think where my, there we go. And the winner is three. And so we just need to know who the first number three is. It's going to come in the chat. And just as a reminder, so that I can mail you the book, if you could please send me via Lee, L-E-E, -E, at LeePapa.com, your mailing address. I'll get that off to you. Maddie Shear, you are the winner of the book and a winner of 365 Day Journey in Mindfulness. I'm excited to send that to you. So don't forget to shoot me your email, uh, your mailing address, and I'll get that off to you. Terrific. Now we're going into part two, breathing and awareness exercise. We're going to talk about the breath a little bit and, um, and then move into the awareness exercise. So it's important for us to really honor the breath. I'm sure you've heard that breathing is good, right? <laughs> but we've become such shallow breathers. It's like we pant our way through life, just getting through, just getting by. I'll take a deep breath, like when my body is so depleted that it's hard to take that breath, right? So that's why it's important that we look at all aspects of our well-being, that we are getting some exercise, that we're walking, because that will help us with the deep breathing and, and drinking more water. Uh, but the breath itself can be used as an exercise, as an awareness exercise and a relaxation exercise and a meditation. And, uh, and so we're going to use that in the exercise. And I invite you to stop holding your breath and waiting for the storm to pass, but instead honoring all the changes in your life and in the world, because the universe is always vying for your highest and best. So keep taking the deep breaths and affirming that your path is open and bright and that we need these changes to get to the point where you are leading and living your most optimal life. Okay. So we're going to move into the exercise and we're going to touch on that awareness and attachment in the exercise. We're going to begin by just getting settled in your seat. We're just going to take about five minutes to do this exercise. I'm going to get you some tunes. See if it's working here. There we go. Just get comfortable in your seat. Close your eyes and begin by taking three deep breaths in through the nose. Bringing your awareness to the breath, breathing in deeply, expanding the chest and belly, exhaling through the mouth. Continue to just keep that awareness on your breath, deepening the breath, envisioning the breath has light and that it's permeating every part of your body, every system, every cell and just lighting you up.
I invite you to consider your emotions at this time as you begin to breathe naturally now on the rise and fall of your breath. Your body is beginning to relax and let down. Envision yourself now on a cloud, a cloud on the ground and you get comfy on this cloud, this nice white fluffy cloud as you are relaxing even more and the cloud begins to rise up slowly, slowly ascending above the buildings and the trees floating up in the sky as comfortably as you'd like to go. And looking down on the ground, you feel separate from that experience on the ground. You feel light and free. You notice that there are blocks, heavy. They certainly appear to be heavy. And each block is labeled with a feeling or an emotion that is less than optimal, a worry, a situation. Each one appears to be so heavy, so burdened. But up here on the cloud, you feel detached. You feel compassion. and you feel empowered and with this knowledge you send love to each one of those blocks and as you are sending love to those blocks they begin to dissolve right before your eyes you realize that they are an illusion each one of them an illusion that became solid with your attention and your reinforcement of them because you didn't understand that with love and practice you can dissolve those energies and you can rise above them take a moment to float on your cloud feeling free and light infused with excitement for the future knowing that change is good it is optimal you feel joy and peace as you float on your cloud and take a moment to enjoy that and I will call you back in a moment That's great. So I'm going to ask you to begin to descend down 
Descend down on your clouds, slowly, slowly, returning back to the ground. But as you return back, you still have that same understanding, not being attached to the energies of that which no longer serves you. Feeling light and peaceful as you return back. Welcome back, and I hope that you have a clear understanding of your emotions. You are detached or detaching from that which no longer serves you. And we're focusing on more of what we want to create as we embrace the change that comes when we begin to shift. We're going to do our next drawing, drawing number two. And I do have a correction on uh, drawing number one. It's Maddie Sheeter. S-C-H-E-E-T-E-R. I think I um, pronounced that incorrectly, so I apologize. And uh, so we're going to pick a number, a new number between 1 and 10. Who is going to be our winner for our second book of a year of Mindfulness for Beginners? And it's 6. Who is our winner, number 6? And just a reminder to send that, send your email, not email, keep saying that, your mailing address to lee at leepapa.com. Lita, Lita Cruz, congratulations. Well done, Lita. Enjoy the journey. Okay, now we're going to move into part three. And that exercise was a combo of an exercise and a nice little quick meditation, but we're going to go into a little longer one. But before we do, we're going to talk about it. We're going to understand meditation a little more and, and set intention along the way. We want to release that which no longer serves us and embrace change for transformation. What is meditation? I remember when I had the wellness center and we would give tours and in the tour, we would always ask, do you meditate? And I can't tell you how many people said, oh, no, I'm sorry, I don't. Uh, first and foremost, don't need to apologize. Um, secondly, people meditate without even knowing it. Do you take a walk in the park without earbuds or, med or you know, music and just are present in the moment? Meditation. Are you listening to some extraordinary, beautiful music, just highly frequency or high frequency music, uh, beautiful tones and uh, melodies, meditation. Are you spending time with your furry friend, your, your, you know, your cat or your dog or whatever pet you might have and just being present in that moment? Meditation. But there are more structured meditations. And it is not about the length of time that you meditate. It's about your consistency of it. That's the most important thing. Because what happens with beginners, I know for myself, when I was first beginning to meditate, I had heard so many positive things about meditation but I was still in that kind of controlled monkey mind phase. I had to decorate my whole room before I would sit down, crisscross applesauce on a, on a cushion to close my eyes and not see anything around me. I mean, silly, right? But that's where I was in my space. But the beauty of that was that I moved through all these phases of understanding the contrast to get to a place of silence and stillness and surrender but I couldn't have just jumped there without going through that phase of understanding the quieting of the mind. And that's why guided meditations are so helpful because it gives the brain something to do, listening. And then when a thought comes in, you can just allow it to move on by, just float on by like a slideshow. We want to still the body. So if you're sitting comfortably, however it is that you're sitting, we want the spine to be straight, 
the neck to be straight, hands resting comfortably in the lap. And you could even lie down if that's comfortable for you. But we try not to do that so that you don't fall asleep. It's, you know, it's possible. And we want to surrender. And the more that we are able and can practice that, and even if it's in small bits, then we'll get stronger in the practice. It's a muscle that you are working. And then you'll realize and get to that place of stillness and, oh, it's so sweet. And it won't take you long, I promise. And why aren't you meditating? I found that there are three main reasons why people don't meditate. One, they say they don't have time. I am the queen of the short meditation, and that's why I offer these six, five, seven-minute meditations to get you started. And I'm going to remind you at the end of this session where you can get those. Because you can get to a place of stillness within a very short period of time. And once you consistently do that, then you can expand the practice. And then some people say, oh, I can't shut off the monkey mind, that constant chatter. That was one of the things that I had an issue with until I stopped fighting it, not shutting it off, not shutting the door. That just brought up fear. <laughs> I just allowed it to come in. And then I was the mindful observer. Oh, it's just a thought. That's it. Nothing more. Allow it to move on by like a slideshow. Coming back to the now, coming back to the present, coming back to you. And then some others are um, feeling like they're not doing it right. right? Like, why, why start? I'm not really sure what to do. Maybe I'm supposed to be doing something with my fingers. and Right? But I promise you, you're doing it right because you're showing up. Just like when I started. Some would say I wasn't doing it right, so I wasn't getting, quote, unquote, anywhere. But meditation, just like mindfulness, is not something to achieve or conquer or overcome. It is the antithesis of that. It is the surrender. And so just keep showing up, and you are in mindfulness practice. You're in meditation practice. Just keep showing up. Even avid meditators, long-term meditators, will still have times when the monkey mind kicks up, but instead of resisting it, we're like, oh, there it goes. All right. And so some days you're going to have profound experiences, others, not so much. And that's all okay. And are you meditating correctly? Just talked about that. We're going to show up consistently for you. For your optimal health and well-being, you're going to show up consistently, even if that's just six minutes a day. Try it in the morning. That'll be like the first thing that you do. You go to the restroom, you get back in bed, or you get in a chair, you sit on the floor, and you do your six-minute meditation. And do that consistently, and you'll find that even if you miss a day, or if you remember halfway through the day, then you do it then. You don't wait until the next day, right? Because if if I hear when's the best time to meditate, I say, when you meditate. Because if I told you it only has to be in the morning, then you've lost the opportunity of all day. Give yourself permission to have the experience, whatever experience that is. And this is a nice thread to keep and remind yourself about over and over again. Give yourself permission. Give yourself permission to, to not be that overachiever right? That type A personality, it's not serving you. Because I will promise you, like I said yesterday, what amount of time that you put into your mindfulness and meditation practice, it's like putting in an energetic escrow into an account and everything else seems to just flow to you instead of you having to grab it, right? It's much easier to sit back and relax and not that you're never going to do anything. Of course, you're going to move in the general direction. But as you are utilizing the time and making it a priority for yourself, your self-care and well-being, then things just flow easier to you because there's less static that is resisting it. Now we're going to move into a meditation. I am going to bring out Rosie. For those of you who know me, you also know Rosie. My crystal singing bowl. She's so delicious. I love the sound of Rosie. Sings at the 
frequency of love. And I will use her in tone a little bit during this meditation as we're going to use the same music. I love that music. And now that you've already started the practice, you're all pros. So give yourself permission to have whatever experience you're going to have. Set the intention that you want for this session. And whether that is to embrace change, to release the energies that no longer serve you, uh, whatever that intention is, we're going to affirm that. We're going to go to the waterfall this time. And of course, we're going to be in gratitude for the experience. Because when we are in gratitude and we affirm gratitude every day for the things that we're grateful for that happened in that day, the universe gives us more to be grateful for. I call it the fertilizer for your dreams, and it is very powerful. And here we go. I'm going to ask you to, again, get comfy in your seat. Close your eyes. Begin to take those three deep breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth. And we begin by bringing your awareness to each of the body parts that I mentioned. And in doing so, releasing any tension in that area. Even if you're not sure what that means exactly or how to do it, your intention will allow for the process. And bring your awareness to the top of your head and releasing any tension there. In the back of the head, the back of the neck, and the upper shoulders where so many of us hold tension. Release, soften, and let go. Bringing your awareness to your face and all the tiny facial muscles across the brow, the eyes, the nose, cheek mouth, chin, just allow the face to droop. And now the throat, releasing any tension in the throat, your center of communication, so powerful. We are either using this tool of communication to nourish ourselves and others or we could be poisoning ourselves and others with our words so choose wisely as you bring your awareness to your chest and belly releasing any tension there in the back all the muscles in the back surrendering getting more relaxed moving to your hips and your thighs down your legs, knees, shins, calves, ankles, feet, all the way to the tips of the toes. Really relax now. And now envisioning yourself dropped into a location that would look and feel like a tropical forest. There is nothing about this location that is resistant to you. It is perfection. It is freedom. It is home. And up ahead, you notice there's a pathway under a canopy of trees that is beckoning you. And you take it. Step by step, getting more relaxed. Step by step, deeper and deeper.
Up ahead, you notice the pathway is dead ending. And as you reach it, it opens up to a glorious scene, a beautiful natural pool of a luminescent, beautiful water, sparkles dancing off of the surface. And at the far end, a waterfall like no other. You cannot even see where it is originating from. It is so high above and it is flowing with the colors of the rainbow. Make your way over to the waterfall and you will stand under this glorious waterfall that will cleanse your energy body, your emotional, mental bodies, as well as your physical body of energies that no longer serve you. It will flow softly like satin and all you have to do is release and let go. Take a moment to allow these colors to wash over you and the energies. And I'll call you back in a moment. waterfall is run clear as your energy bodies have been cleansed and it is time to return back now slowly slowly beginning to return back walking along the pathway that brought you here underneath the canopy of trees back to your space and time, back to your location. Wiggling your fingers and toes, taking a nice deep breath. And only when you're fully present and back, then open your eyes. How was that? Little mini version of the waterfall chakra wash that you will have access to. Hmm, feels so good as you can tell that it doesn't take a whole lot of time. And the more that you practice, the faster you will drop in. I know that we're when we're in person or even in the virtual mindfulness lounge, uh, I go through that process of getting you relaxed and moving into the visualization. But once you get used to it, you drop in and stop hearing me, which I think is phenomenal. <laughs> and then you can go in and really journey on your own. So we are now moving into the drawing. We are on drawing three. And we are looking for a number between one and 10. One and 10. And if you're all back, <laughs> great. Nine. Wonderful. Wonderful. 
So we have a winner. We have a winner of Sandy Jacobs. That's awesome. Sandy Jacobs, well done for the book, A Year of Mindfulness for Beginners. And now we're going to, well, that went fast. We're moving into part four for a recap, the Q&A and closing. And if you're still feeling, well, a little loopy, um, that's okay. That's good. Um, we are just going to touch on effects of practice, of a mindfulness and meditation practice. Uh, you know, we, we already know this, right? We just, in a short meditation, we feel de-stressed, right? Um, but it also is a facilitation mechanism for recovery. So what I mean by that is if you injure yourself, you can recover faster. Uh, pain reliever, you know, it's been, uh, science has proven that it is an extraordinary pain reliever. It's certainly a mood elevator and enhanced problem solving. You retain information at a higher rate. And there's so much more of that ripple effect of practice. Remember that you are the master surfer. You're the surfer of the change because you know through change there's transformation coming and you are in mindfulness practice so there's no judgment around it. Your intention is the key. Remember your goal with emotion, the mindfulness and meditation practice, doing the inner work of self-observation, embrace change and learn to ride the waves. So we're going to do one more drawing and this one is for a 30 minute virtual coaching session. Okay. So one to 20 this time we need a number from one to 20. The first person to get it right. And the number is 11. Who is our winner for the coaching session? Just as a reminder, if you got the coaching session, just shoot me an email and we'll schedule that. And uh, I'll send you a zoom invite. So who has number 11? Looking for number 11 winner. <laughs> Do we have a winner for number 11 for drawing number four? Don't have that up yet, but I'll tell you what, when we, uh, there we go. Kristen, Kristen, and I don't want to butcher your last name, Kristen. Uh, Whitrike, Whit, Whitrike, Whitrike, W I T T R E I C H. That's without my glasses. So, congratulations, uh, Kristen. Please give me a shout out on email and we'll schedule that. Terrific. Thank you so much. Don't forget to go to the website to get the free booklet and the free meditations. You can get the meditations under shop meditations and free. If you need anything, if you had any questions that we didn't get a chance to address, or we won't get a chance to address, um, please shoot me an email, lee at leepapa.com. Uh, I'm always here for you. Thank you. And let's do our Q&A. Lee, thank Hello. you for joining us. That was amazing. I've never experienced a chakra waterfall wash. And that was mini, mini. <laughs> very mini, very mini, but very easy to do. Terrific. And I think you will have opened uh, a new door or a new river of possibilities for a lot of people who were listening. Wonderful. So I have a couple of questions that have come in. Awesome. And the first one is something I'm sure we can identify with. If you have a very stressful day and your brain goes into overdrive, what is the quickest and easiest way to stop this in order to go to rest? Um, I, I mean, I feel like a, a broken record, but it is that quick meditation. Um, download it. It's six minutes. It's, um, it's an amazing tool. If you can't step away and do six minutes in a putting, you know, in a earbuds, um, breathing, taking those deliberate breaths in through the nose, expanding the chest and belly, exhaling through the mouth. And, um, and I teach in my program, Mindful Makeovers, a, a mechanism of how to transmute energies by using a bit of a kinesiology, um, um, practice, uh, but it can really be done through intention. And that is when you are doing that breathing exercise, that emotion that you are feeling. So let's say it's fear coming in or frustration coming in. You visualize that word 
And then through your breath, you just watch it dissipate. Because I will tell you, I go back to the whole thing of everything is energy and you are powerful. So you start to become the driver of your ship. And that if you're feeling overwhelmed, you have the tools within you. You don't have to go externally. When you do go externally, it's fine to then get the, you know, uh, get the structure and then you'll embrace them yourself. But everything is within you. So I hope that answered that question. And if we're the master of our own destiny in terms of being mindful and take, carving out that quiet space for ourselves, Lee, how do we avoid the negativity that is around us from permeating that little safe, quiet space we've created for ourselves? Well, what's interesting is um, when we discuss that we're, we're energy and the, our immediate circumstances and whatever is external is a direct reflection of what's going on inside us, that if there's a lot of chaos inside us and then we try to go and meditate, um, you may have some distraction, you may hear things. It's just a reflection of what's going on inside you. So use it as a tool. We use everything as a tool for our own expansion. So when we are hearing the distracting noise or the annoying, you know, vacuum or whatever that is, then we use it to drop back at drop back as that observer and allow it to just move on by like a slideshow instead of what we're trained to do and what our pattern is, is that knee jerk reaction of resistance. So again, just being aware, mindfully aware and non judgment, it takes practice. Mm -hmm. The more you do it, the better and easier it will be. And Marla has said, um, and, and it's a compliment to you, Lee, that she thinks that you've given some of the best descriptions of mindfulness she has ever heard. Oh, and thank, thank you. you. Um, thank you. And do you have a particular meditation app that you would recommend? I don't. Um, I, um, there, are a lot of, there are a lot of apps out there. Um, I, I guess I would say Insight Timer. Uh, Insight Timer is one that I'm associated with. I don't, you know, not associated as part of their business, but years ago when they first, they were like the, one of the first one or, or second one that came out before a whole slew came out, you know, over the last few years. Um, and they reached out to me and asked me if I would put some of my meditations on their website. What I love about it is that it's, you have free access so you don't have to pay if you don't want. There are aspects to it that you can pay, but you have access to a plethora of meditations from thousands of instructors and see what resonates for you. Um, as far as that's really the only app I would, uh, I have enough experience with. Um, I think technology is phenomenal. It's, it's great to use. But um, but you you are powerful enough to to do this as well. So I don't want you to give away that power to every piece of you know tool or technology, but to use the uh, the opportunity to go within. And Lee, if we want to leave our audience with um, some steps that they can take to make mindfulness and meditation you know a habit of a lifetime, mm -hmm. to create that habit, how do you build? the time to meditate into your daily life? Great question. So first and foremost, you choose. You choose you and you begin to um, affirm that your value and your health and well-being is of the utmost importance, more important than anything, because it's not just about your um your physical well-being it's about your emotional and mental and spiritual well-being you know we're we're a combination of all of that so you make a deliberate choice and then um and then you practice uh, again there there are tools i mean there's uh, there's a book um there are the free meditations on my website leepapa.com under shop and meditations You're, you have access to i think three or four of them that are free um there's the downloadable book, A Roadmap to Living Mindfully, Understanding Self-Love, Self-Care, and Self-Mastery. So start dipping your toe in. And then 
I say you choose a time that is optimal for you. And if that is first thing in the morning, which I think is most helpful for people, because, you know, if you have kids, young kids, you can schedule it ahead of time so that you get up 15 minutes earlier. Um, you make you a priority and you start consistently set an alarm on your phone. Make sure that you don't betray yourself when you set that time, because that just reinforces a negativity that you are not valuing yourself and no one else is going to value you if you don't value yourself. So Absolutely. let's say it's 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and you schedule that time every single day. If you have to put it in your day timer, put in an alarm on your phone, that's what you do. And then honor your own breadcrumbs, right? Set the intention that the right teacher, the right program, the right app, the, the right message will be attracted to you. And you will know. Keep tapping into yourself to say, yes, I'm acknowledging that feeling is, is a light feeling in my body. Your tool, I mean, your body is a tool and it will message you when something feels right or is less than optimal. And so you honor that. I know we're Thank running. You, Thank you so much. I really, really wish that we could all be in Vegas with you, which is your hometown. Come on down. <laughs> at IMEX America, where people would be able to engage with you in person and see the wonderful work that you do. But thank you for being our virtual guide, for taking us on a wonderful journey toward mindful living. Um, this session has been recorded, so everyone will be able to do those exercises again and benefit from them. But from Lee and from myself, I'd like to thank you all for joining us on Planet IMEX. And until next time, it's goodbye. <laughs>